Okay guys, I have another eye opener for you. So you know how back in medieval times, people would try to take elements and turn them into different ones. You know, the whole alchemy shtick? Well what if I told you that it actually has some ground to stand on? That's right, I'm talking about one of the many crazy things you can do with chemistry, and all it takes is a little bit of electricity. So what I'm referring to is a process called electrolysis. I just discovered this a couple days ago, and to be honest, it really got me more interested in chemistry overall. It was first discovered by this guy. Svanta August Arrhenius. He was doing an experiment to see how electricity conducts through chemical solutions. He used table salt in one of his experiments and found that when an electric current is applied, the solution does some pretty crazy things. Okay, you may be wondering at this point, hold on, how on earth does electricity travel through a solution? Well, at least I was wondering that. So I'm going to explain it, at least for my sake. So as you probably already know, salt is made up of sodium and chlorine, and these two elements are these things called electrolytes. That means that they can conduct electricity when they are in a fluid state, for example when they are dissolved in water, or when they are in a liquid form themselves. For this example, let's melt the salt, because obviously that's the much cooler path to take. At around 800 degrees Celsius or 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, the salt melts and turns into its liquid state. State. In this state, the sodium and chlorine separate from each other and form sodium cations and chlorine anions. The reason that they're ions is because of the ionic bond they shared, which honestly is another topic and I kind of want to stay on track, so I might cover that in another video. Anyways, we have our tub of lava salt. What we do next is we stick two metal rods, called electrodes, into our lava tub. These rods are attached to a battery, and when the battery is turned on, the rods go to work. Electrons in the battery move out of the negative side and transfer to this rod, which is called the cathode. The negatively charged cathode attracts the sodium cations. At the same time, the battery takes electrons from the other metal rod, called the anode, making it positively charged. The anode then attracts the negatively charged chlorine ions. So in the end, the electric current is supplied by the extra electrons in the chlorine and the lack of electrons in the sodium until all sodium and chlorine atoms have balanced out to their equilibrium state. But hold on, this is where it gets really interesting. So chlorine has another interesting characteristic. It's diatomic. This means that it tends to bond with itself to form Cl2 when it can. And since all chlorine atoms are right next to each other in the tub, well, what are they gonna do? Hook up with each other. And Cl2 is what we know as chlorine gas. So now there's a gas inside the lava tub and that's gonna flow to the surface and bubble out of the tub. So hypothetically, if we let this thing run for long enough, all the chlorine will leave the lava tub and eventually there will be just molten sodium in there. So let the lava tub cool off and what do you have? A block of sodium. And there you have it, modern alchemy. We started with table salt, melted it down, hooked up a battery, and voila, a block of sodium. That is, of course, assuming you survive the poisonous chlorine gas. Yeah, good luck with that. And this is only one example of what electrolysis can do. I saw another example where you start with water and essentially can split it up into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. What was once an essential liquid for life turns into an essential gas for life, plus another one that would blow up in your face. Man, I'm just starting to get into chemistry and things like this just fuel the passion, you know? Anyways, I just felt like this was so cool to me and I wanted to share it with you guys. To all the experts watching, did I get everything right? If not, drop a comment so we can all learn some more about the topic. At the end of the day, that's what we're all here to do, learn together. Be sure to like and subscribe and hopefully we can learn something new tomorrow.